as your teacher said, it, this is one of the days that it will be the day that we can never forget. Like, all people remember when President Kennedy was assassinated, or people older than you in their 20s, they remember when the Twin Towers collapsed. In Israel, people remember when Prime Minister Rabin was assassinated, when President Sadat came to Israel. This is one of the days that you never forget, especially in the land of Israel. Because now in Israel, most of the people are crying for joy. Because after five and a half years that we pray and pray and we pray, the miracle came. And Gilad Shalit now is back home. His family story is like this. Uh, his parents are Aviva and Noam. His brother is Yoel. His sister is Adas. His grandfather is Tzvi. His grandfather is Holocaust survivor in his 80s. The father Noam has a twin, <coughs> had a twin brother, Yoel. Yoel was killed in Yom Kippur War. And the Yoel, the brother of Gilad, named after his after his uncle. Um, Gilad was a very, is a very quiet person. We talked with his uh, school friends. Quiet person, very smart, uh, with glasses, skinny. But even though he was quiet and his family was very fair, family, he volunteered to a combat unit in the Israeli army. And he was in a tank unit, the same unit that his uncle was fighting and killed in the Yom Kippur War, 188 unit. In his uh, unit, he was in a mission near the Gaza border. The area of Gaza is an area very popular by Palestinians, and now the leaders there are Hamas. And they decided to kidnap one Israeli soldier. How they did it? The border between Israel and Gaza is electric, fence, if you touch it, you will be caught immediately. So they didn't touch the fence, but they dig a tunnel under the fence, and that's how some terrorists from the Hamas entered to the area of Israel. They came to the tank of Gilad Shalit. They killed two people in the tank, and they kidnapped Gilad. They will run with him very fast to the Gaza area, and from that time, he disappeared. The government of Israel and the army had two choices, maybe three. One, to give up, to let him die in jail forever. And this is not a choice for the state of Israel. The other choice, to, de to do a military action to rescue him. Why they didn't do it? Because 20 years ago, there was a case of a soldier, Nachshon Waxman, that was hitchhiking, kidnapped by Palestinians, was hidden in near Jerusalem. <coughs> the army unit went to rescue him because they had most of the intelligence, but not all of it. They entered through one door. They were shooting into the door, but they didn't know that there is another door. When they came to the other door in this time, the terrorist killed the hostage, Nachson Baxman. That's why the government of Israel and the army decided that in the case of Gilad Shalit, they won't do a military operation because they want him to come back. So the third option was to liberate thousand terrorists, that some of them are very, very heavy terrorists that killed many people in Israel, and to get Gilad back. The government and the army hesitate long time, five and a half years. And only last week, the prime minister decided this is the time, maybe the last time. Why the last time? Because 25 years ago, exactly 25 years ago, we had another story of a soldier, a pilot, named Ron Arad, that was parachuted in Lebanon from Phantom. His pilot was rescued. He was a navigator. They didn't succeed to rescue him in the first hours. And then he was kidnapped by a terrorist organization in Lebanon. In the first two years, the government of Israel negotiated, and then after two years, he disappeared. One of the rumors is that he was sold for money 
to Iranian organization. 25 years passed. His mother passed away already. His daughter, that was nine months, finished the army already. And we don't know what happened to him. He disappeared. So the government of Israel decided that in this case of Gilad Shalit, we won't let it happen again, and we will do everything to bring him back. And last week, they decided to re release 1,027 terrorists and to get Gilad back. And this morning, he came back. For Israel, it's a miracle. You know, thousands of people volunteered to help the family. Thousands of people that most of them never met the family, never met Gilad. Last summer, the uncle, what's your name, Joyce? Matt? The uncle of Joy, uh, the uncle of Matt, Joy, had a bat mitzvah party to his daughter in Jerusalem. And I came to visit them because his uncle is a friend of mine. And after I visited them in the hotel, I told them I'm going to the tent of Gilad Shalit family. So Joy's uh, wife asked me, do you know Gilad Shalit? They said no. So why are you going? Because in Israel we care so much about every, everybody. We are a small family in Israel. And Gilad Shalit <coughs> is part of our family. That's exactly what Israelis are feeling today. And you will see when you go home, look at the TV, parades of Israelis. People are laughing, people are uh, celebrating, people are dancing, and people are waiting to see Gilad after he will recover. I want to invite my friend Idan here. And in Israel, many, many people that support the family of Gilad Shalit carry this all the time with hope that one day we can get rid of this. And I'm so excited to do it here, to get rid of this ribbon, because Gilad is at home. So we can, let's do it together. Who was the Rambam, Maimonides? He had this amazing phrase, slogan, Ein lecha mitzvah rabba kefidyon shvui. And today it happened, and we did what Maimonides asked us to do. Toda rabba in chak sabayah.